Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Open the door is the title of this devotion. Yesterday I shared a devotion with you, The Door is Open. Today I want to talk to you about our responsibility to open the door from our end. From God's end, He's opened the door to you. Now, it's up to you to open the door to Him. He has opened the door to you. You must also open the door to Him. And you know what it means when somebody is not gaining access and the door is not open. And, and many times the door is not open because we're not making the effort to open it. We're too busy with our work, with our entertainment, with our other relationships, or too many other things. And we just don't take the time to open the door. I myself think about this because I find the Lord Jesus and our loving Heavenly Father exceedingly gracious um, to, to show such contentment with perhaps still comparatively so little access. I'm trying to find my words, as you notice. You know, I, in other words, I keep feeling, Robert, that there's more, more that you can open the door. Yes, you open the door and the Lord is there and you have access because from His end the door is open. But the moment you open the door, boom, you have access. And, but then when you have that much access, you ought to open the door more often. So I don't know, I'm sure you maybe have that too sometimes. You think, you know, I get up to pray and, and the Lord is so gracious, but I could pray in the evening or I could pray then. And so I want to encourage you to maybe open the door more often. And here in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door, says Jesus, and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And just remember some time ago reading this verse from the Passion Translation and it really kind of touched my heart because you see the original text is written in Greek and the English has several words to describe one of the Greek words and the translators had to choose one of the words. But that doesn't mean that the other words are not just as as true. So I personally like sometimes to, to get the different words so I can get a fuller, fuller understanding without the Holy Spirit. Of course, it doesn't matter how many words you have, you'll never understand because you need the Holy Spirit to understand the spiritual things. But here in chapter 3, verse 20, here it is. Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come into you and feast with you and you will feast with me. And to the one who conquers, I will give the privilege of sitting with me on my throne just as I conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is saying now to the churches. Again here, verse 20, Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come in and feast with you and you with me. Open the door. The Lord has opened the door to you. Now you have to open the door to Him. And I am so grateful that the Lord gives that impetus, that encouragement, that motivation to open the door. 
to hear his voice, to let his spirit come into us so that we may feast in his riches of glory and he may partake of our lives and we may begin to see his involvement in any and every area of our lives. And I want to encourage you, open the door. You know, there's an incredible, beautiful story. I think it's the book of Ecclesiastes or Songs of Solomon, one of the two, where the bride is, is waiting for the bridegroom, but he's delayed in coming. And she takes off her bridal dress to rest. And then she hears the bridegroom knocking on the door. I think it's the Shulamite that this is talked about. The name of the woman is called the Shulamite. And, and she is hearing him knocking. But she says, oh, my loved one, I am already, I am not ready to appear before you. I'm not dressed. I am, I've already taken my rest. And then she sees the hand of her beloved come through the opening of the door to try to unlatch the door, but it was locked and he could not unlatch it. And then she realized seeing his hand, oh my goodness, why would I not be ready? And she quickly made herself ready and came to the door in her bridal dress. And as she opened the door, the perfume of the hand that had touched it was on the fragrance of his presence was there, but he was not, he was not. And she could not find him. And she was actually abused out there as she went to go find him. And, and that all of course has a type to it, but that story is quite gripping how God would have us do more than just open the door but live ready for communion with him, live ready for intimacy with him. Some years ago, I was preaching near Antwerpen, Antwerpen in Belgium for a precious group of Armenian saints. And when I came into the meeting, the presence and power of Jesus in that meeting was so incredible my goodness, the people were caught up in the spirit. And when I was given the place to share there, the presence and power of Jesus that came was so forceful. And on the spot, Jesus spoke through me and said, live ready for my appearing. And he put that word into my being, live ready. And I know sometimes I'm, I'm maybe 80%, you know, ready or so. And at other times, 100% or sometimes maybe even only 60 or 30. But I don't want to be, I don't want to be caught powerless for the needs of the people. Because it's true. I've sometimes had to talk to people and yes, the words were there but there was not sufficient power to liberate them. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said, to open prison doors and proclaim liberty to captives. And I have suffered the pain of sometimes just not being able to open the door for them. The door was open for me, but I couldn't open it for them because I didn't have that readiness. And I plead with you, Let's live ready to not only have the door open to the Lord continuously, constantly, and live in such readiness of communion and fellowship with Him in the Spirit, but that we are given the grace to open the door for others who don't know how to open it for themselves, that we can open it for them, that they can feel the love and presence of Jesus. Oh, I've, I've so many, many experiences where the Lord Jesus granted me to open the door and proclaim liberty. Oh, I have so many experiences and I cannot bear it when I feel the powerlessness. I can't open the door for them. 
I can't bear it. So I look a daily pursue by the mercies of my Savior and the grace of his indwelling presence to keep the door open and to live in the readiness to open the door for others too. So I want to say to you today, let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit have you in such a phenomenal place that the door is open for one, from your end to the Lord. The door is open from His end to you, but it needs to open from your end to Him and that you live in readiness of communion and fellowship with Him and that you can be so empowered through His indwelling presence that you can open the door for others. So let me close with John 14, John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus has gone to open the way through the sacrifice of himself. And he thereby not only opened the way, but showed the way how we can live with an open door to him for continual fellowship and have been given the grace through that fellowship to open the door for others who cannot open it for themselves because they're so stuck in their, in their failings and in their unbelief and in their doubts. It's kind of like Mark chapter 9, I think it is, where Father comes to Jesus and he said, Lord, if you can do anything, help me. You see, his son was being attacked by an evil spirit. And that evil spirit was trying to kill him constantly by throwing him in the water or throwing him in the fire. And, and, and the father had brought his son to, G, to Jesus' disciples, but they could not open the door for him. They couldn't do it. He wanted to get out of his prison of affliction, but he couldn't get out. And they couldn't open the door for him. And the father said to Jesus, if you can do anything, Help me. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And he said, Lord, I, I believe. Help my own belief. And instantly Jesus was moved by his spirit and opened the door and set that boy free from that evil spirit. And the disciples said, Lord, why could we not open the door? And Jesus said, for your lack of fellowship and consecration, dedication, you're not living ready. So come on, I plead with you today. Let's open the door from our end as the door is open from his end and live in continual communion with him and thereby live ready to open doors for others. Amen. Have a good day.